Apart from very rare instances, level zero is very repetitive. Where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights and maximum hum buzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. Although level zero is mostly made up of randomly segmented rooms, hallways, and flights of stairs, some cracks on the wallpaper can be found occasionally, showing that maybe people tried to escape this level. Most walls have outlets, crown mold, or both. Sometimes cameras can rarely be found on the ceiling, but it is by far the safest level. Beings can in fact be found lurking around here, albeit rarely due to them usually being lured out by hermits on the edge of level zero or groups of people. It is extremely rare to see anything other than a hound or duller. There are currently eight known colonies and outposts on level zero of the back rooms. Number one is Fort Blake. It used to be a major base of operations for the insurgency, but was destroyed after a battle with Camp Blastor. What's left of it is controlled by a looter group known as the Rascals. Stevie Town, only 12 or so citizens, led by a man named Steve, who acts as the colony's sheriff and mayor, mostly friendly. Camp Amber, 50 citizens, close to the hub, has a small defense force, friendly and open to trade with new citizens. Backroom Explorers, consists of at least 178 lost people, very friendly, and have a safety protocol when an entity is nearby. The Wilford Colony, a population of 487 lost people, mostly friendly but hostile if necessary, has a heavily armed security guarding the colony against entities, led by John who acts as the mayor. Security is led by Jake who acts as the colony's sheriff, has a transportation system traveling to the hub, open to trade survival equipment, such as night vision goggles, almond water, and first aid kits, etc. Has a small hospital, police force, and fire department. The Tom's Diner. Resides Tom, as the name suggested. He was a chef before no clipping into the back rooms. Has food supplies that could last for another two years. Tom is a cheerful and optimistic person. The Lucid Group. A group of eight people who that no clipped while dreaming. Known to no clip to different levels and out of the back rooms, this group is not confirmed to be real, as only one person has mentioned it. Furthermore, the person refuses to reveal the location of the supposed group. Get out post one. Biggest remote outpost in the tourism guide. A general population of 80 to 86 people. Travelers and passerbys not included. Always moving. They relocate every few weeks. Allows new people or bypassers to have a rest inside or trading. Can recruit new members inside. Have search and rescue teams ready on standby in case of emergency. Now that we're done with that. Leaving level zero. It is very simple to leave. Just exit using an entry point or use your own entry point to go back. Although exiting through an unknown entry point could lead to an even worse place than the back rooms. You can go into some dark rooms and end up on level one. Level one. Exact descriptions of level one vary from person to person. Some report to have seen gigantic biomes of terrain, while others have reported seeing huge expanses of grimy concrete filled with a low-flying fog. It seems that level 1 is completely random, or it appears different from person to person. However, the most common theme in level 1 is similar to the mono-yellow design of level 0. The key difference are concrete walls instead of wallpaper tile floors instead of carpet, and dimmer fluorescent lights. Entities typically lurk at or above level 1. Known entities on level 1 include dullers, adult facelings, hounds, and skin stealers. There are multiple ways of reaching level 1. 
Like other levels, it can be reached randomly with stairs, elevators, and hallways. And one also has a small chance of landing there when no clipping into the back rooms. In addition, at any point, there's a chance that the lights will begin to flicker on and off. Eventually, the lights will turn off for minutes to hours at a time. With no lights, this level becomes very dangerous. So bring a light source if you're exploring. Colonies and Outposts There are currently three known colonies and outposts in level 1. It should be noted that attempting to keep up with these colonies and outposts will prove extremely difficult, as the back rooms stretch out for millions of miles. The Chaos Republic The largest outpost in level 1 consists of mainly young adults, quite hostile and not open for trading. Exploration Alpha, group mostly comprised of older people outcasted from the Chaos Republic, hellbent on escaping level 1. Mental health is a large problem amongst this group. Normally friendly and open for trading, although mental health obviously does affect this. Lastly, Sanctuary. Hidden behind a false wall, roughly 98 meters southwest. Hidden behind a false wall roughly 98 meters southeast from the exit, the smallest outpost in level 1, features drawings from an unknown entity called Carver. No sightings of Carver have been reported as of September 28, 2019. Guide Outpost Number 2 Second outpost of the Tourism Guide and the second largest group in level 1. Heavily armed at all times because of the entities. Normally open for trading except for search and rescue times. Not friendly with the Chaos Republic. Open for staying with them for safety for a week or so in exchange for small bits of supplies. As for leaving level 1, you can leave level 1 by simply continuing to explore the back rooms. Level 1 usually leads to level 2 or back to level 0. Level 2 Level 2 consists of millions of miles of industrial hallways, gray floors, and concrete walls adorned with locked doors containing pitch black windows, ventilation ducts with odd noises coming from them, and pipes that contain viscous black fluid. Most of the time, the noises in the vents are caused by crawlers, one of the entities that you can find on level 2. Other entities here include smilers, child facelings, clumps, hounds, small death moths, and bursters. If you encounter any creature in the halls, your only option is to run in the opposite direction and pray that you cannot run it. The hum buzz of electric lighting is much stronger than level 0 or 1. Level 2 can get extremely hot, so taking water with you is advised. Level 2 can induce extreme claustrophobia due to the tightness of the halls and can cause insanity after long periods of time. There are useful supplies on this level, so if you're prepared for a fight, staying for a bit can prove to be beneficial. As for the colonies and outposts on floor 2, there's first of all the Mothbusters. They consist of a few people, presumably 6 or 7. Their main goal is to eliminate death moths in level 2 and level 3. Pied Pipers Medium sized colony with about 12 people, but there might be more. Named after the fluid pipes on the walls. Has a small stock of almond water from level 10. And lastly, was formerly the guidepost number 3. Once the biggest group in level 2. Abandoned because of large amounts of entities and no available resources. Formerly 20 to 24 people leaving level 2. Contrary to popular belief, not all of the doors on level 2 are locked. You can go through some of them and go to levels 3 and 4. In level 3, the rooms are smaller and hallways are more claustrophobic than the lower levels. In this level, it's easy to find random objects, some of which can be very valuable, such as lighters and weapons. 
Level 3 is also a level where the Wi-Fi is the strongest. It's ominous, but for a good reason. Pipes line the walls and ceilings of this level, which makes it easy to distinguish from the previous levels. Due to the sheer number of entities inhabiting this level, it is recommended to head to the next level quickly. However, there are lots of useful objects lying around on level 3, so it can be beneficial to stay and collect items if you're confident. Colonies and Outposts Due to the nature of the level, no known confirmed colonies or outposts have formed. However, there have been rumors of a group consisting of rabid people turned insane by the back rooms. Of course, these are just rumors and should be taken with a grain of salt, as no known evidence of this has surfaced. Leaving Level 3 the only way to leave level 3 is through elevators which often lead to level 5. Like certain other levels, there is no way to access the level immediately above. Level 4 Level 4 resembles an empty office building, though it is almost completely devoid of furniture. Some rooms on this level have windows, though most of them have been completely blacked out. Any windows which have not been blacked out are considered traps and should be avoided at all costs. Level 4 is mostly devoid of entities. Hounds and dullards are the only ones to have been observed. One person claimed they saw a smiler, but no evidence exists. Because of the lack of beings, there is lots of people on level 4 scattered around this level. Water coolers, vending machines, and fountains containing almond water can be found on level 4. Scattered around this level, there are water coolers, vending machines, and fountains containing almond water. Level 4 is very easy to escape to and from, and also return to. Level 4 is the best place to meet other people and find supplies, before attempting to move on to the next levels. You should stock up on almond water, you will need it especially in level 5 and 6. There are currently 4 known colonies and outposts in level 4. Keep in mind that attempting to find these colonies slash outposts is ill-advised as the backrooms stretch out for millions of miles. BAS stands for Backrooms Analytical Squadron. This group consists of scientists skilled in certain areas as well as architects. The group is known for their research, discovering many different things about the backrooms. They are mostly friendly and open to trade, although a lot of them are quite reserved and not very open to newcomers. Another group is Amor Incrementum. This group is a religious cult who worships agriculture. This group is one of the smallest groups in the back room, having only around 10 members. They only plant, the only plants they grew were various species of mold harvested from the walls of level 0 and level 1. They are incredibly hostile and not normally up for trade. However, if you have a religious object, such as objects depicting Jesus or religious entities, they'd normally be willing to trade. The TBD. Nobody knows what it means, but that's just what they call themselves. The group likes to hoard things. The group is very small, with only six members. The group will also ignore you unless you try to interact with them. And they only trade for really, really weird things. Guide Outpost number 4 Consists of 24 people and one recently deceased. This group consists of people from the Tourism Guide. Great relationship with the BAS until losing contact. Good defense position from entities. Lots of resources. Leaving level 4. Level 4 has occasional exits that lead to level 5 and level 6. Most exits take from the office style stairways or occasional elevators that may even lead back to level 3. As with almost all exits in the back room, once you lose direct line of sight with it, it may disappear unexpectedly. As with almost all exits in the back rooms, once you lose a direct line of sight, it may disappear unexpectedly. Level 5 Level 5 is the 6th level of the back rooms and often considered to be the smallest. It is generally regarded as one of the more safe levels, although it's still very easy to get lost or go insane in. The only creatures are death moths, which aren't extremely dangerous. 
So keeping sanity is priority to surviving on this floor. It's one of the most cluttered floors with art decoration furniture being quite commonplace. It is also most likely the oldest floor, coated in a thick layer of cobwebs and dust. This floor is filled with swarms of death moths, as this floor is their central hive. Many people report seeing a mysterious beast with a squid's head and a human's body on this floor, although it seems to only prey on mentally unstable people. People who turn on Google Maps have noticed that their location is strangely marked as Hollywood, California on this floor. There is also a rumor that if you play the elevator game on this level, you will be transported to level 1.5. Level 5 appears to be an abandoned hotel from the early 20th century. There are reports of two different areas, the hotel and the boiler. The hotel is the safer of the two areas. It's comprised of a series of large rooms and vaulted corridors. Most of the rooms are relatively empty with occasional 1920s era furnishings and details. Most of the halls are covered in by ornate wallpaper that seems to have faces or stairs you walk by. The floor is dark wood or burnt red tile, usually with exotic carpets placed on top. The large banquet rooms and lobbies have plastered walls, which occasionally peel to reveal dingy bricks. There are a number of early 20th century elevators scattered across the area. They are different from most backroom elevators as they have elegant dark wood frames and wood panel interiors. The floor indicator above the elevators goes from 1 to 13. Attempting to use the elevators will result in death. The main hub of this area is the Beverly Room, often referred to as the Eternal Ballroom. The gargantuan room has two doors on the west wall and two doors on the east wall. Each leads to a different area of either the hotel or the boiler. It only contains a small art deco table in the center, illuminated by a large chandelier. On the table is an unfinished game of mahjong. All the entrances are marked with a small copper sign reading, The Beverly Room. The second area, known simply as the boiler, is a series of large cobwebbed hallways with high ceilings and stained plaster or concrete walls. This area contains a number of barred off areas with large pieces of machinery. The long corridors are hot and dry and the scent of smoke fills the air. Pipes and exhaust valves from the early 20th century line some of the walls. Some of the larger rooms have roaring 20s era furnishings and details. Many have reported the sounds of whispers coming from the large face-like boilers. There are currently three reported early 20th century elevators within the boiler, and it is advised to avoid them at all cost. As with all the levels, there is a constant buzz of iridescent whenever traversing this level. People have also reported the sound of faint big band swing jazz music and distant party chatter. This level is infamous for its mysterious whispering and unseen presence. People report something whispering incoherently behind them, or tapping their shoulder when they're alone. That, along with the stares of the face-like wallpaper and 1920s era machinery, can cause a major loss of sanity. Which is why one will need almond water to survive this level. Luckily, it can be found from leaks in the ceiling on this level. Those who have gone insane here speak of a mysterious beast known as the Beast of Level 5. It has been described as having a humanoid body with the head of a cephalopod, with tentacles around its mouth. People have claimed it has camouflage abilities, and say that its glowing eyes are staring at them from the wallpaper occasionally. It is unknown if the beast is real or a hallucination, as it doesn't resemble any of the other entities seen on Level 5 and has only been reported by those with questionable sanity, although reports of it have very similar descriptions. There is one colony set up in the large lobby of the hotel section. They call themselves the Originals, and are comprised of a number of people trapped in the back rooms from between about the 1300s and the 1940s. They are suspicious of anyone from later or earlier time periods and keep to themselves. They are willing to trade goods with passers-by, but are reluctant to trade with other major colonies. 
The majority of people in this colony were trapped in the back rooms after the 1906 San Francisco earthquake and the 1912 sinking of the Titanic. Notable members include Amelia Earhart, Dorothy Arnold, John Jacob Astor IV, and Captain Edward Smith. Level 6 has been traversed by few and survived by fewer. Many do not set out to enter level 6, rather stumble upon it when traveling too far into the boiler in level 5. Only a small amount of documented information is currently available, and only two photographs have ever been recorded. A level 6 is entirely devoid of all natural light. However, items that produce light such as flashlights, lighters, and lamps give off light and can also be used to investigate. Even though it's possible, not many explorers stay long enough to report notable findings. There are rumored to be no beasts in level 6. Many believe that the monsters on level 6 are not physical, but rather a general atmosphere that lets out the ones in your head. As previously mentioned, some believe that this level is an entity itself, though this is not proven. Colonies and Outposts There are no known colonies or outposts on this level. It is simply impossible to have a permanent one as of the dangerous sounds and visuals. Leaving Level 6 The specific method of exiting Level 6 and accessing Level 7 is unknown. However, it seems just traveling through level 6 for a prolonged period of time is the way. The only other ways are simply to turn back through the boiler once you reach the level, and traveling too much to find a door which leads to level 7. Level 7 Level 7 is unique in that it's a vast expanse of water that appears to stretch on endlessly, making it a lifeless ocean. Like level 6, it is pitch black. The screams of level 6 are not present. The water is distilled rather than being salt water or regular fresh water. Nobody thus far has truly explored level 7. But what is currently known is that the first and potentially only room of level 7 is not flooded and has the usual fluorescent lighting. The room has a thin layer of water on the bottom and is strangely skewed from the rest of the floor. The single door opens to show the surface of the water from a top-down perspective. The room is seemingly rotated horizontally, but gravity still works to keep one's feet on the floor in the first room. Upon entry, gravity switches to pulling one towards the water and is significantly stronger than regular gravity. The water has been reported to be very cold and is generally not advised to enter it. The floor of the ocean is made up of carpet hardened by the thick layer of tar and bones above it. There are several skeletons including several almost humanoid figures and massive toothy fish. Little else is known about the depths of these waters, aside from the extreme darkness and the endless expanse of tar and bones. In terms of things or entities, Level 7 has only one reported one alone in the freezing waters. The thing on level 7 appears to have killed off any other life in the ocean. The current depth of level 7 is unknown by exact terms, but the members of BAS has determined it to be impossibly deep, architecturally wise at least. Colonies and Outposts The first colony are the prayers of the water god, a group that has a sort of floaty base that prays to the thing on level 7. Numbers of people in the group, uh, roughly 15. Behavior, calm, quiet, but also tricky and mysterious. Main mission is to pray to the thing on level 7, and free any people they meet to it. Anyone who encounters them will be greeted with food, water, and sleep in their base, and will be asked if they want to join in. If they say yes, they will teach and give the suit and or costume for the proper way to pray and follow the leader. If you say no, they will kindly take your answer and give you food, water, and sleep. 
They will kindly take your answer and give you food, water, and sleep for as long as you want. Do not, and I repeat, do not drink, eat, or sleep in their base. They will sacrifice or free you to the thing on level 7. They will drug you to sleep so they can do their ritual easily. However, this is a humor. No one knows if it's true, and there's no certain proof. Guide outpost number 5. This research base, briefly owned by both BAS and TDG, is now abandoned. Pre-abolishment, it had 8 BAS scientists and 20 TTG guards. Its main purpose was to study the depths of the seafloor. Search for an exit or find the thing on level 7. After finding the seafloor seemingly infinite, and eventually finding a more practical exit. The team gets attacked by robe-wearing attackers, likely the prayers of the water god, and retreated through the more practical exit, ending up at level 4 with a sealed water-leaking fire door. The base was abandoned. As for leaving level 7, the only two known exits is through an underwater exit shaped like hole, Located somewhere in the carpeted ocean, which was discovered by U slash Bartonius and U slash Evolded. A more practical way is exiting through a double sided door with the exit sign, no exit, glowing neon red that seems to appear close to the only room on this level. It leads back to level 4, although the exact location is unknown. Level 8. Level 8 is a giant, expansive cave system with numerous spiders and spider-like entities inhabiting it. Like level 6 and 7, it is pitch black. There's many nests that spiders made, most inhabited by small venomous spiders and massive king and queen spiders. The king spiders of the colonies are fortunately not venomous, but the queen spiders are highly venomous. Most die within minutes of a queen spider bite. Large clear pools can be found in the dead ends of the cave. These pools are highly dangerous as anything that enters them gets torn apart and drugged down by a humanoid tar black hands. Another type of nest found on level 8 is a bloody grave that houses Franken spiders. A dangerous mutated spider that regenerates through a gland found in its chest cavity. Certain areas of the cave have almond water dripping from the stalactites on the ceiling. Colonies and outposts. There are no known colonies or outposts on this level. I'm leaving level 8. There's no known way to leave level 8 so far.